Transport Minister Cindy Siwe Chikunda, who's briefing the media following the uh, yesterday's crash on the N3. Let's take you live there. Also, the deputy mayor of the municipality is also here um, to see for ourselves as to what happened yesterday. Uh, but I think it's important that we extend our heartfelt condolences to the families who lost their members. We understand that six people lost their lives, five on the scene and one at the hospital. And three of those are from one family. Uh, our hearts go to those families and, and, and we wish that God give them strength to deal with the loss. Um, but also we are aware that there are people that are in hospitals that sustain injuries. Uh, we visited the first one at Netcare Hospital, I mean first three at Netcare Hospital. They are recuperating, others are waiting for operations, uh, they sustain some injuries, but of course they're very stable. Uh, we are still going to go to other hospitals to check for ourselves uh, with regards to others that sustain injuries. And then of course we, uh, we wanted also to ascertain as to whether we now know as to what caused the accident but what we know is that the investigation is still going on so we will await the investigation to be finalized and then of course i think only then will we know as to what happened we always emphasize uh, that the human factors are the causes of many of our accidents they account for more than 80 percent of our accidents on the road it may necessarily not be this one but of course the environmental factors where we look at the issue of weather mist and so on they too are responsible for many of the accidents but of course if we were to have it right with the human factor uh, uh, issues then we would not have many of the accidents we'll be able to avoid those and of course the last one will be the engineering of course the road itself whether it's pothole whether their caves and so on and so forth. Looking at this road is one of our best roads uh, in the country and three. Uh, and, and I was just saying this morning that most of the roads that are regarded as hazardous are our best roads because people just drive, they speed, they, 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 they do as they wish and then they lead to many of the accidents. So yes, we are here to really extend our heartfelt condolences, but maybe to find out as to whether they, we now know about the cause, but we've been assured that the investigation is going on and we'll await that as soon as we know as to what actually happened, then of course we'll be able to inform uh, South Africans. I'm Jason from ENCA. Minister, thank you for that. If we're talking about this area, and I appreciate that you're saying that it's still early and this is uh, still a time of investigation when you're talking about this particular accident. But if you look at this area as a whole, the vicinity that we're in, there have been a number of similar accidents, pileups, truck accidents. Um, you, you find it on a regular basis. So if we look at the issue broadly about road safety in this area, are we any closer to understanding what's going wrong? I, I, I think we should, um, as, as long as we get to know as to what the cause of a particular accident is. Because for instance, you have said it could be a truck, it could be a, a, a minibus, it could be a private car involved. I think we should be able to know. Um, I've not seen any report, for instance, about accidents that have happened in this area and therefore know as to what usually will be the cause, because I will be lying to you there. But as, as soon as we get to know, as soon as the investigation is finalized, then we will know for sure that for this one accident, the cause was this. Then we'll be able to pronounce on that. There was a just if I could just ask another question. There was a, a, a tweet that I saw this morning uh, from the AA and it, it got me thinking because uh, the, the essence of it was that adding police officers and increasing law enforcement during these busy periods is not going to be enough. It's only one part of the problem because driver behavior is the other part of the problem. So how then are you tackling that issue of driver behavior? Because I heard you say it as well, that it's, it's the human error that is causing a lot of these accidents, generally speaking. So 
how are we able to successfully tackle that problem? Otherwise, it seems like it's it's going to be a perpetual cycle of accidents if we don't get to that point. You know, in, in South Africa, we have a very robust uh, process of getting a, life, a, a driving license. First, you study uh, the road signs. You write the examination. You have to pass it with 100%. And after that, you are trained on how to drive. You are tested on that. Only when you pass that you are able to drive on the roads in South Africa. That's a very robust process. And therefore, we take it that anybody who is driving, first they know what the road signs means. That's the first one. What we're seeing just on this road, for instance. You take it that they know. But secondly, they know how to drive, how to reduce speed, how to increase speed. You we take it that they know. And thirdly, they too have a role to play. That is why we actually are saying, restrain yourself. And, and, and we take it, that is why we also uh, 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 increase the awareness during such seasons. So that people themselves know they have a role to play. Then, of course, law enforcement has to happen because when people do not abide and respect the rules of the road, then we have got to enforce the law. But it is also a fact of, the, of, of, of life that we will not be able to have a traffic officer every 10 kilometers on our roads because we don't have that. But the traffic officers as well that we have are also trained. They are traffic officers there to manage traffic on the roads and they are there to do that. But of course, people, they decide they look for traffic officers and then even to battle up, they will only do it because they are seeing a traffic officer. They will speed as they wish, only when they see the traffic officer or they see a speed camera, that they will reduce the speed. And, and, and that is the unfortunate part of it because it then leads to so many accidents. And that is why we are saying, it's human factors that are responsible. If as South Africans, we can tell ourselves that we're going to abide by the rules of the road, that which we know we're going to apply it on the road. And we always emphasize the fact that the speed limit might say this, but if the environment calls on you to reduce space, you therefore take that into account, the, the prevailing environment. You take that into account. You are a human being, you are a person. You can actually see that it is missed. The following distance is important. But people like the back to back. When something happened, when an accident happens, then everybody will pile on because the cars are just in, I mean, at the back of each other. And, and that is a problem. So we are here again to remind our people that that may be the Easter weekend is over. It doesn't mean that accidents may not happen. They happen, as a matter of fact, every day. If you look at the average number in South Africa, you probably have 40 people in the country dying per day. They die out of accidents. And we can actually reduce that. We can reduce that. Um, Minister, just a question from my side, Jade Paulser from the SABC. Are there engagements from the transport department with freight companies? Because when we do see trucks being involved in these in these horrific accidents, uh, many times we find that the, the truck drivers are negligent or they fatigued. So are there engagements with um, seniors from freight companies? Have there been talks? I think they, they, they will also respond because they are there. I, I just don't want us to suggest that this accident was caused by any truck driver or any truck for that matter. I, I don't want us to, 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 to make, to give that, uh, I, mean, I mean, picture. It may necessarily not be true. However, yes, we do interact with the trucking uh, 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 family. Uh, in fact, I will be meeting one of them soon. In fact, I was supposed to meet uh, 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 somebody from the, 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 what is this, Road Freight Association today. Had it not been for me being here. Amongst the things that we discuss are exactly issues related to road safety. They tell us that they do their own assessment and evaluation before any truck can leave, particularly from those who belong to such uh, associations. They tell us that. But of course, there will be those that do not belong to associations who sometimes may not comply with what we expect them to do. So it's, it's quite a number of issues. But I just want to say it may necessarily not true, be true that 
for this one accident the truck was involved but there will be trucks because on this road you find a number of trucks like you're going to find quite a number of sedan cars like you're going to find quite a number of buggies like you're going to find quite a number of of of, of taxes but it may necessarily not mean that they were responsible for the accident itself and that is why i'm saying we better wait for the investigation to finish uh, minister, the they are here no you covered minister oh i wanted to well know done. minister since uh, you say three of the six uh, people that died during the accident were actually family members do we know as to where were they heading to exactly and who they are not as far as I know, um, I know now, we were just told that three were from one car and therefore they're family members. And then of course the other three were, from, were in different cars. Um, just that. Um, whether they were going to Jobek, surely they were coming from the Deppen side, heading towards the north, where to, I, I'm, I still don't know about that. Uh, Minister, there was another family that also... There was a family that also saw a mother also losing a life and a three-month-old baby being left behind. Do you have any information about the baby and the family? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. The investigation. Okay, How old? Uh, uh, madam, let's wait for the final report. We can't at this stage uh, conclude everything. The sooner we report is finalized, we will then provide a detailed report. We can't deal with issues that other families that are very emotional about this, this matter. We can't go in details. Uh, and as, as the minister already indicated that we are sending condolences to the families. We can't go in details uh, where, who are those because others, maybe they might not even receive the news. But if now we are here or are now is saying it's this family, I think they respect that. Then the minister has spoken. And I think uh, unless there is other thing that you want to ask the minister. Uh, minister, I just want to add one last question. Since we are talking about the Easter weekend beyond this particular accident, are you in a position to tell us what it looked like on the roads over uh, this, this weekend? Holistically, I mean, uh, what was the national picture like? Was it any better than last year? Not really for now, um, but already you can tell that we've added six more bodies. Um, but we, I, I can tell, we will be releasing the statistics, I think, on the 6th or on the 12th. Only yeah. then we'll be able to give the account of everything that happened during the Easter weekend. But obviously, it's a known fact that we have already added uh, six uh, bodies.